Welcome back to Investor Intel. Coronavirus has two R's in it, but today we're going to be talking about the triple R deposit owned by Fish and Uranium. Here to educate us, Dev Rendell, one of the legends of the uranium industry. Well, thanks for having me, Peter. It's, uh, it's always uh, a pleasure to talk about triple R and what an amazing job our, our team has done technically. Um, and uh, But unfortunately, people have always been very focused on spot price, and that's the biggest change between you okay. and I chatting in March. Right. So you and I chatted in early March at the mining show, which seems like a lifetime ago. Yes. And you said this was going to be the year for uranium. And boy, have you been right. Well, I'm, you know, you it's math, but unfortunately, you know, there's a math side to our business, but it also seems to be kick the can down the road, you know, that we've got from utilities. They right. What the virus has done and in some ways you feel like uh, you feel bad. You're the backup quarterback, and the guy breaks his leg. Now you get your chance, and you win a Super Bowl, like Kurt Warner did. So you don't want to try to make light of what's happening with the virus. But what it did was, it showed the, I would argue, um, a very short-term, and some would say poor strategy of counting on the spot market to provide. That's what I believe the Western utilities. Right. It, that strategy has been exposed. That that. And we're and we're reliant upon foreign powers as well. Exactly. You can't sooner or later, you got to do it yourself. But, you know, they when I got in the business, you know, Peter, spot was only like 10, 15 percent of the market. That's it. People right. were disciplined, long term, plan ahead. Then suddenly um, you've got last year, 50 percent of the business was virtually, um, I argue, more because some of the uh, Kazakh contracts are written away. It's really a spot, not really long term. Right. So, when you suddenly take off cigar, cut back Kazakh, it really it showed how thin the spot market was, and and as a result, um, small change like these, these stocks have exploded, um, you know, and also it's, it's and, kind and, of odd. And the, the spot price for uranium has gone up as well, hasn't it? Very significantly. You know, we hit thirty one fifty. Um, we we're only 23, 24, not that long ago. So it's up, you know, 40, 50 percent. So um, that's the, but that's the spot. What's happening long term? Yeah, the spot. Like I said, they, used to, they always used to have a spot in the long term, and then the long term was always generally higher than the spot. And but it was always people um, never talked too much about the spot because chemicals of the world don't trade on spot. They look at long term contracts, right? Right. So, but now. Western utilities have been counting heavily now on the spot price, and suddenly that's, that, that product sitting in the market's gone. So now what do they do? What are we looking at on the supply side? Well, uh, from what I understand, is about 54% of the monthly supply um, has been you know, taken out, <clears throat> whether it's uh, 14 million here, 18 million here, Kazakhs, I don't know whatever numbers they have, but the bottom line is, I think the number is roughly 54% of the spot price has been removed. So the what have you got? You got a 50% increase in the, in the price of uranium, roughly, right? So, right. so, um, so then how, how does the triple R deposit fit into that broader macro picture? Well, I think we, when the Chinese invested us, they always looked at it out in the middle of, of the 220, 24, 25. So for us, really, it's access to capital. You know, since we've talked, um, we were able to secure about $14 million credit facility from Sprott. And that was very important because it gave us three, you know, three more years of run. We have four or five years to pay it back. So that really helped. And I always believed if we would um, do that, we would be better position to uh, get equity. And that's what we're seeing the last couple of days. We've seen some good interest from brokerage firms saying, hey, it looks like uranium, you know, trade is on, you know, and uh Money is very, uh, sadly today, it moves like from here to there and there. So Money has no conscience. It goes where it's loved. And unfortunately, it's always looking for, uh, uh, you know, that quick return and from pot to here to there. So if there's such a thing as a winner in this isolation crisis time, it would be gold, obviously, uh, from the printing of money and then uranium because it just shows you how um, how thin that market was that these utilities right. were living on so and obviously fission's price has gone up in correlation with the uh, price of uranium absolutely we 
we got crushed down with and then, then as you know it's all about computers these days so when the spot trade people just hit bids and went all the way down and we we're able to um i think we were closed yesterday at 30 cents and we were in the 15s not that long ago right um, so for it's kind of odd in a week a stock would double but i think this just shows you how much volatility there is out there and we as a company have to manage that, and I and that's what we're trying to do. What do we see in the future for the uranium market? Well, it all depends on how long these mines are shut down. Um, I was hoping to have a chat with a couple of industry leaders this morning, but they're tied up on a call. Um, one particular one from Saskatoon, um, and you know, get their view. But really, it comes down to the longer, for example, um, Cigar Lake is not online the longer it takes to bring it back on right yeah you just don't open and close a mine overnight yeah it's not a coal mine it's not a coal mine <laughs> you know pull the canary yep. out and the way you go but uh so i think that's a very big piece but it's also a bit of a lesson don't you think that if i was running a company and i'm producing uranium making profits but my stocks trade in 1150 and now I've stopped producing and my stock is almost 14. It just tells you how screwed up, I think, or weird this industry is. That the, Yeah. <laughs> the junior mining industry generally right now is bizarre. It is. But you make more money with your pen than you do drilling. Absolutely. It's sad. And, you know, people say when the drills are going to go and I'm going, oh, we tried that, you know, for yeah. year, putting out results <laughs> and nobody cared about our results. I think there's a certain point where people say, hey, it got enough pounds. We, Triple R ticks the boxes. No other deposit does. Right place, Canada. Persist, uh, more importantly, we're in um, Saskatchewan, where they're pro mining, pro business. Um, they've had lots of, you know, they've had 60, 70 years of my uranium mining. So it's not my backyard. So we're in the right jurisdiction, um, and it's the only shallow deposit, 50 meters from surface. That's high grade, over 100 million pounds. So it ticks all the boxes. Um, and now that we, the risk of funding is out of the way, um, it puts us in a, that's why I think the stock has performed well, is that we've taken, we have de-risked, uh, given ourselves a bit of a runway going ahead. Whenever I have a uranium question, you're the guy I turn to, whether it's here, on social media, privately, by email. Yeah. I thank you for all the time that you take to educate yeah. schlubs like me. Uh, well, you know, I'm not, I still, uh, when, I, when I talk to, you know, really smart guys, um, you know, Tim Getzels, um, you know, people like that, you know, you really find out what you don't know. Um, and, but you know, at the end of the day, this industry, uh, we need energy. It, it, it's not something we need, but I, and I believe uranium, um, is a big part to have that clean energy available. It's the only energy with base load and green, not leaving a footprint. So, you know, um, I think it has to be part of what, if we want a, a cleaner energy source, it has to be a part of it. So for me, it's, it's more than just, um, you know, a business. I think it's a, a true answer uh, when you, I mean, it's funny how well, you know, people always talk about Sweden, but one thing is they get their power from there. France gets their power. They get, they need growth, but they need right. clean growth. Well, I thank you for your time today, just like all the time you take online to help me. And we'll check in again in a couple of months. We'll see how things are then. Uh, might be a week. Who knows? I think um, <laughs> I think this last week was the longest year I've had. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, it is. It's it's just bizarre times. You know, stocks are doubling, people are raising money, and virtually nothing happened the last two three years. So we've had more activity in the last month in the uranium industry. I would say in the last four years almost. If you take two three two out, uh, which was uh, uh, like a Seinfeld show about nothing. Um, it's you take that event out. It's been very boring. Now yep. suddenly uh, we've seen some excitement. So it's 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 a good time to wake up and uh, and see what's going on. Because if these closures continue, I, the uranium price will go up. The one the penny I'm waiting to drop is Olympic Dam. They're about 500 uh, kilometers from the Adelaide Airport. And if that ever shuts down, because Olympic Dam, their uranium is all byproduct. They don't care what it costs to get. They just dump it on the spot price. They have no conscience about it. So, and that that's one of the reasons I think the spot price hasn't done well. So those kinds of things happen. We could be having another chat in a week. 
Well, maybe we should plan on that rather than a couple happy of months. To. You're the I'm expert. Happy to. <laughs> okay. Have a great Thank day. Stay you, safe. Thank you.